Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I'm Tom, and today we're going to look at section 2.2 in our text. This is the subject of roots of unity. So here we go. I want to start out with a simple problem, a problem which we know the answer, and that is this, s, s squared equals 1. Now, the simple approach to this might have been to take the square root of both sides, but when we do that, we miss out on part of the solution because what we know is that the real way to solve this is to set it equal to zero. And then, then it factors. It factors into s plus 1, s minus 1 equals 0. And so really we have that s is equal. Oops, we have s equals minus 1 and positive 1. Or we just write, normally though, we would just write plus or minus 1. Okay, well, let's take this step one, this one more, for, one step further, sorry. So, s cubed is equal to 1. Well, you could take the cube root of both sides, and you come up with s is 1. But if you take the route of factoring this, you could say that this is also the same as saying that 0 is equal to s cubed minus 1. Well, if we factor this, this is s minus 1 times s squared plus s plus 1. Well, now look at what we have. One of our roots we know is going to come from the solution s minus 1 equals 0. The other two roots, there's two more tucked in here, come from when s squared plus s plus 1 equals 0. So our first solution is s equals 1. The next solutions come from the quadratic formula. I, if I could factor this for you, I would, but I can't. So let's just factor this. This is, or I'm sorry, use the quadratic formula. So s is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of, this is going to be a 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 over 2 times 1. And so we can simplify this and to say that s is minus 1 plus or minus i square root of 3, all of that, over 2. Well, that's two more solutions. So what do we have? Our solutions now are, I'm going to write them in this order, is I have one of my solutions, s, is negative 1 I'm going to write it this way, negative 1 half plus i times the square root of 3 over 2. Sorry about that little weird dot there. Clean that up. And my next solution is negative 1 half minus i square root of 3 over 2. And our final solution is just the 1. Let's take a moment and let's study this a bit closer. First off, um, I want to figure out what is the length of these. These are, these are all uh, complex numbers. If you think of the last one as 1 plus 0i. So let's try this. I'm going to call them s1, s2, and s3 in this order. Well, let's try. Well. Um, so s, s1, well actually we don't even need that. Let's just find the length of s. We know that one of them is 1, but let's check on the other one. So this says you take the negative 1 half, you square it, plus you take the square root of 3 divided by 2, and you square that. You take the square root of all of that. Well, that's just 1 fourth. This is the square root of 1 fourth plus three-fourths, but that's just the square root of one. The square root of one is one. So now look, now what we see is that all of these points are, are on the unit circle. So let's draw this, let's draw this. Um, I'm going to draw this nice and big. I'm gonna grab some graph paper here. It'll make this a little bit more clear. So here we go. I'm gonna make a fairly large circle. Um, do a better job than that. I think I have this 
technology to do such, so I might as well. Okay, and then let's go over here. And I'm going to put a circle, let's put a unit circle on this. Um, Okay. Oh goodness. Okay, that'll work. So let's graph these points. So the first point I have is negative one half plus i root three over two. That is going to be that is going to be negative one half. That's going to land right there. Oops, I wanted this color. That's going to land right there. That's going to be this, this line right there. And then I, my other one is negative one half minus that. So that's going to be right there. Okay, let me draw that line as well. And then my other point, my easy point here, is right here at 1. Okay, so now I have my three points. I have my three points. Let's do this. Let's write each one of these points. I'm going to write each one of these points now in polar coordinates. So let's write polar coordinates. So negative 1, oops, let's go back to my white. So if I take negative 1 half, plus i is the square root of 3 over 2. Well, what do I do? My polar coordinates, it's the length of the modulus. So the, our modulus here for all of these is 1. So this is equal to 1 e i. And now our reference angle that we use to find this is is this pi over 3 inside here. But our actual angle measured from the pi, it comes around like this. Well, if this is pi over 3, this first reference angle is 2 pi over 3. So this is e i 2 pi over 3. OK, then the next one, let's write the next one. So the next problem is minus 1 half minus i square root of 3 over 2. Okay, the modulus is also 1. And if we have this pretty green color here, if I was to track my way around, all the way around this to this next one, well, my reference angle inside of here would be another pi over 3. The total angle there is, the total angle is ei to the 4 pi over 3. And then my, let's, we still have one more to do. Let's not take it for granted. If I have 1 plus 0i, um, I can write it as a couple different things, but let's not use 0. Let's, let's keep our circle going. So if I was to continue my path around this circle, I would have traveled a total of 2 pi. So let's write this as 1 e i to the 2 pi. Okay, now, now we can look more closely at where this idea might lead us. Notice the problem started with this, that s, that s cubed was equal to 1. Okay, well what we did then is, notice this, notice that that then we said, well, we solved this, and what did we solve? We solved it, and we found out that s is equal to um, e i to the 2 pi over 3. And we also said that e is equal to, or that this is equal to e i to the 4 pi, oops, 4 pi over 3. And we also said it's equal to e i to the, now I'm going to, you could say 2 pi, but let's continue this, this thirds idea. If I did that, it's the same as 6 pi over 3. 
Now, let's cube both sides of the equation. So in other words, I'm going to get an s cubed here. This equals, well, this becomes e i to the 2 pi and e i to the 4 pi. And it even becomes e i to the 6 pi. So notice that e i to the 2 pi, that's 1. So is e i to the 4 pi. So is e i to the 6 pi. Those are all 1. So now I just took the 1 and I wrote it I just wrote it as rotations around the circle. And that is where the idea of the roots of unity come from. They come from how many points does it take to get around the circle? So when you're solving the cube root, it takes three points to get all the way around the circle. If you were to find the fourth root, it would take four trips around the circle. So let's actually try an example now. I'm gonna go to it, grab a fresh screen, and let's try this example. So find, or solve, we'll do this way, solve s cubed equals 8i, 8i. All right, well, let's do this. Let's write this as s cubed, and then let's write it, um, write this, solve that, write 8i, because this is, Remember that 8i, this is the same as saying 0 plus 8i. If you think of it, because it is a complex number, it's just the real part has a value of 0. But let's write 8i in polar coordinates, or in polar form, polar form. Okay, so 8i is equal to, well, it has a modulus of 8, and it has an angle of pi over 2. So ei pi over 2. Okay, now let's look at this problem more closely. Now I have the problem of s cubed is equal to 8 ei pi over 2. But well, wait a minute. What's another way where a place where you could have 8i? It, well, that would happen if you make another lap around the circle. So in other words, you could have one if you went to 8, E, I, and then if you took another lap around, well, that would be pi over 2 plus another 2 pi. Well, you'd also find 8i if you took another lap around. So if we did that, this would be 8, E, I, to the pi over 2 plus, well, the first lap was 2 pi, and we take another lap, that's another 2 pi. I won't write that out again, that's a lot. But what if I wanted to go again? I could, and I'm going to show you what happens. E8, E, I, to the pi over 2, and we're going to take an, our third lap, so this would be uh, 6 pi. Okay, now let's take the cube root. So I'm going to write this out. I'm going to do some simplifying also. So this, what this really means is that this is s equals, so I'm raising everything to the one-third power. So this becomes 8 raised to the one-third times e i. I'll put this in parentheses. Um, 8 Oh, not like that, this. E i pi over two, also to the one third power. Well, and let's continue this out. Now, when I take the cube root of eight, that's going to be two. E i, and then pi over two plus two pi, that's gonna be four pi over two plus pi over two, that's five, five, pi over 2, and then we're going to take it to the 1 third. So in other words, we're just going to be dividing it by 3. Again, we take the cube root of 8, that's 2. We're going to take the cube root of e i, that's going to be a 4, 8, 9, 9 pi over 2 divided by 3. And let's try one more. We're going to take the cube root of 8, which is 2 e. This is going to be 
13, wow, 13 pi over 2, and then we're going to divide it by, oops, divide. We're going to divide that by 3. Okay, so let's clean these up a little bit. Um, to write this a little nicer, we have s is equal to 2 e i to the pi over 6. And our next root comes from 2 e i 5 pi over 6. And our next root comes from 2 e i, well this is the 9 is going to reduce by the 3, so this is really just a 3 pi over 2. And our last one becomes 2 e i 13 pi over 6. And we're going to stop there, and we'll see why here shortly. So what do we have here? Well, this first, this first number, I, I could leave it in this form, or I could go back. This would be my polar solutions. But what I wanted to show you is this. Is let's look, take a look. Let's find, um, let's take compare 2ei to the pi over 6 and 2ei to the 13 pi over 6. So if I look at my unit circle, let me put a unit circle up here. Okay, circle again, make a nice circle. Okay, and notice this, if I'm at pi over six, pi over six is going to be this number right there. Okay, this is, this, this angle in here is pi over six. Well, think about what 13 pi over 6 is. If I take and if I take 13 and I divide it by 6, notice that this is also the same as 2 and 1 sixth times pi. Well, 2 pi, this but this is the same as 2 pi plus another 1 sixth of a pi. Well, 2 pi, that is going to take me to purple. And purple, well, purple is going to take me twice, once, one all the way around. But then, that's 2 pi. But then if I continue on, I end up where? I end up right back at this point. In other words, in other words, 2 e, oh, let me go back to my color. In other words, 2 e i pi over 6 is exactly the same point as 2 e i 13, darn, 13 pi over 6. And so it, that's why we only need to find the first three, since we're taking a cube root, we only need the first three laps around the circle, first the starting point and then two more laps. If we were taking the fourth root, we'd need a starting point and then three more laps. And then any more laps after that just take you right back to a lap that you've already taken. And since we're mathematicians and not runners, we won't take so many laps, just enough. And now I can finish up and write my final answers. So let's do that. So if I have the point, the first point is that 2e i pi over 6. I could leave this in polar form, but let's write it also in rectangular form. That's the same as 2 times cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine of pi over 6. This, this is the point of 2 times. Well, cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2 plus uh, i sine of pi 6 is 1 half. So th this is the point square root of 3, whoops, I forgot my i in there, plus i. That's my first rectangular point. So this, is, this is point right here is square root of 3 plus 1 i. All right, let's find the next one. I'm going to come up in this little bit of space that I've left. My next one comes from uh, 2 e i 
5 pi over 6. Well, this is going to equal 2 times cosine 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. This is going to be 2 times. Remember, 5 pi over 6 is actually, it's actually this point right over here. Um, so let's see, that's going to, that's my reference angle there is pi over 6, really, I, except for that cosine is going to be negative there. So this is going to be minus the square root of 3 over 2 plus i times 1 half multiply by 2. This cleans up to a minus the square root of 3 plus, again, 1i. Okay, and then my, that's this point here. This is the minus the square root of 3 plus 1i. And my final point, my final point was 2 times ei, 3 pi over 2. This is 2 times cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus i times the sine of 3 pi over 2. Well, notice this. Now, where am I? I'm, I'm at this point down at the bottom. So that's interesting. OK, uh, well, that was there. That's going to be 2 times. Cosine there is going to be 0, and sine is going to be a minus 1. So this is going to be an i times minus 1. And so really the point now is 0 minus 2 times i. And that's this point, 0 minus 2 times i. And of course, normally you don't write the 0. I just wrote that to show you that it is a complex number. And it has a real and an imaginary component. And that is how you find. Uh, the roots and or and or the roots of unity for a polynomial using the complex numbers. I hope that helps and thanks for watching.